Welcome to the IDPA Equipment Check. Equipment Check is done at most sanctioned matches. It's either going to be at the beginning of the match, just before registration, or during the match is one of the stages. Today we're going to emulate that it's before registration and the shooter's going to come up, we're going to do an inspection of his gear and the gun all the way through and then we'll break it down for you later. Hands straight out. All right. Pull your vest back. That all looks good. How about you lay down a your weapon and a mag, empty mag? Thank you. You make weight. You're good to go. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, now we're going to break down everything that we looked at and what I'm looking for. All right, sir, if you'll hold your hand straight out. What I'm checking here is I'm making sure that I cannot see the holster or the mag pouches when he's holding his hand straight out. Hold your vest open. Now I'm looking for the placement of both the holster and the center of the trigger guard is beyond the center line of his body. And if I have any doubt of the width away from his body, I use the dowel rod and I place it right in between and both the gun and the dowel rod have to be touching his body and the gun or the dowel rod needs to be touching those. And they are. Here you can see while the gun is in the holster, the entire trigger guard is covered and the entire front strap to the trigger guard is at or above the belt line. All right, we want to make sure that the mag pouches are beyond the anterior superior iliac spine, better known as just the hip bone. And the hip bone is actually, the top portion of it is a little bit forward than normally you'd think, so it's well beyond that. And like I said, if we have any doubt, we take the dowel rod test and we do the same thing and it's all good. All right, now you have the shooter lay down the gun and an empty mag, and we make sure that it's safe. All right, so we check all the safeties on this. So the first thing I'm going to ask is what division are you? Obviously, it's CDP. Mm -hmm. All right, you're shooting the 1911-45. So I'm going to make sure that all the safeties work. I'm going to make sure, first of all, that it normal, uh, the grip safety here works. Push the grip safety in, it does fire. All right, then I'm going to put the safety on and make sure that the safety works. The safety does work, and then when I lower the safety, it doesn't fire. All right. Then I'm going to put the mag in, the slide lock works, and while I'm doing that I can flip it over and see if there is a firing pin safety, and this actually does have a firing pin safety in it, so I'm going to make sure that the firing pin does not go forward and that the plunger is in, ta in fact in there. It's a 1911, a normal 1911 with the firing pin safety, and it's, there's the plunger, and all we have to do with this one is just push this in right here. And if it doesn't go in any further than that, the firing pin safety works and it's not disabled. So that works and passes. Now I'm going to put it into the box with the magazine in. Make sure it closes. Now I'm going to take the gun and put it on the scale and make sure that it weighs less than 43 ounces, and it does. All right, sir, you are good to go. Thank you. Now we're going to do a different division. This is SSP. So the same shooter comes up. We're going to make sure that the vest and all that works. We've already done that. Go ahead and lay your gun down. And an empty mag. And one of the things we talked about was when you, somebody brings a gun out, it should be pointed in a safe direction. Once you're established that it's empty and it is a safe gun, then we can do things like put it in the box. Uh, but what I'm going to be checking on this is that the same things, all the safeties, I'm going to make sure that with the mag in, the slide locks, I'll lower it, and then you have a safety in here, a trigger safety, and it does work, and then it's a normal. Put it in the box, close it, 
And even with SSP, we want to be under 43 ounces, and it's well under 43 ounces with a polymer gun. So that's an SSP division. Alright, now the shooter's coming up with a revolver. And the same thing, we'll do the vest checks. Everything looks good, open up your vest. And we make sure that he does have a speed loader pouch in the front, which is fine on the strong arm. The revolver is in the same position as far as the trigger guard, and the other speed loaders are beyond the hip bone. All right, go ahead and lay your revolver down. And once we make sure that it is a safe weapon, we make sure that all the safeties on this are working. One is that when the cylinder is open, it does not fire. When the cylinder does close, it will fire, and then there's an internal safety when we're releasing the trigger, we make sure that the trigger comes out on this particular gun. All right, there is no other safety on this, so we're good to go. It does not have to fit into the box. The revolver bug division does have to fit into the uh, box with the spacers, but this particular revolver does not. Then we're going to weigh it. It has to be below 43 ounces, and it's well below that. Your equipment check is good, sir. All right, now we have the shooter with a CCP division. So everything works the same as far as all the equipment check and the vest check and the belt. So go ahead and bring out your gun and an empty mag. So this is a concealed carry pistol. It has to fit in the box with the spacer and all the same things as far as all the safeties go. So this does not have a grip safety, but does have a regular safety, so I'm going to check that. I'm going to lower it, make sure the hammer doesn't fall, and then with the empty mag, it slide locks back, and I'm also going to make sure there uh, it is, and it works. And now with the box, with a CCP gun, the same quarter inch plate goes in, and you have a new side and a new upper one to make the right dimensions. You place the gun in, close the door, make sure it fits, and it does. And then we weigh it. And it makes weight. You're good to go, sir. Alright, now we have a shooter that's shown up with a bug division gun. So of course, I've asked what division you're shooting, you're going to tell me a bug, and I'll have you open up your vest. Right, that's good, open up. And he happens to have an inside the waistband holster. And if you notice, it's slightly canted, which is okay for inside the waistband, so turn a little bit towards the camera. Alright, so this is all legal. Go ahead and lay your gun out, show that it's safe. All right, part of uh, being an equipment check is knowing your guns. And obviously you don't know every single gun and all the safeties that are involved. This one does not have a grip safety, but it does have a normal safety and that we're going to make sure that does work, and it does. Also, this does also have a firing pin safety. And we'll show now as far as fitting in the box, we're going to have to put the spacers in. So this one will have not only the CCP spacer, the quarter inch, but also these blocks, and we make sure that the gun fits in the box. It does. Alright, we'll weigh it. It's well within weight, and you're good to go. Okay, once again on the inserts on the gun box, you have the quarter inch plate, that goes in. You have for bug, you have the side, and the upper one gives you the dimensions for the bug gun. You keep the same bottom plate in, and for CCP, now you have the dimensions for the CCP gun. Of course, every now and then you get a new shooter that shows up in the equipment check that doesn't have anything right. So this is the case. So the shooter shows up 
and there's many things wrong. One is the vest is too short. So hold your hands out. We can see everything. We can see the holster, the gun, the mag pouches. So that's incorrect. Hold your vest open now. And we see that there's several things wrong. The belt is incorrect. There's, it's not going through the loops. The rule is it has to go through all but two loops of the pants. And this is an overbelt. So that's illegal in IDPA as well. Not to mention that it's too thick and too wide. He also has too many mag pouches on. He has four mag pouches on. And if we do the dowel rod test, you can see that obviously there's a huge gap between him and between the gun and his body. Not to mention that it's down low and it's tilted away from his body, which is all illegal. Even for a female shooter, a female shooter can have a drop holster, but it has to be vertical with the holster, which this one is. So this would be legal for a female shooter, but this one is definitely not legal for IDPA. All right, now we're going to talk about some individual problems or illegal uh, situations with each gun. We have an XDM here that could be shot in CCP or SSP or ESP, depending on what you've done with the gun. This particular gun has a couple issues with it. It's perfectly legal for CCP and ESP division, and actually with the way it's sitting right now, it is not legal um, for anything. And that's the reason for that is because of the base pad on the magazine. And I'll show you that in a second. But there's a couple things we want to look at on here. Is the back plate of the slide, if that is removed for like an M&P, and the plastic is removed and put in with an aluminum back plate, that makes it no longer legal for SSP. It's only legal for ESP. And then we have uh, the problem with fitting in the box. Let's say this is going to be shot today in CCP. So once again, we do all the checks with this gun. We make sure that they didn't file. There's a grip safety, or excuse me, a trigger safety right in here. We make sure that that is not filed down and it's working perfectly fine, and it is. And then we put it in the box. If you notice, with this box, this does not fit in because of the base pad. Now there's certain things you can do, push down on the rear sight, and that you can be depressed to see if it'll fit. But you cannot bring the gun out of battery to make it fit. This, no matter how we put it in the box, will not work. So it is illegal for our IDPA competition today unless he changes the mag out and puts a normal base pad on. All right, to do the box check on a SSP, ESP, or CDP gun, you place the gun in the box, and if you have to compress the front sights, that's okay to make it fit. But this gun, as you can tell, has plenty of room. It's got room to spare. But if it were tight, you also could push down on the lid to make sure that it fits inside the box and it does close completely. So there's a, comp there's a way to compress it this way and a way to compress it down to make sure that it fits. The next gun with the M&P is the same deal as far as the trigger safety. We make sure nobody's filed that down and that it does work. So it's perfectly fine there and then normal trigger safety works. And a 1911 or a 2011 in this case the things we already talked about as far as grip safety, this grip safety right here needs to work and there's some people that have disabled this, they've locked it down, or because of chroming, it's just sticky. And so if that's the case and it holds in there, then you no longer have that ability to have that safety function. So that would be illegal for IDPA. So we want to make sure that that works, that the normal safety works, and that when we lower the safety, the hammer doesn't fall. Now, this is just a 1911, all the same things we just talked about. That it doesn't fall with the grip safety, grip safety works. And then once the safety is on, we try to fire it, lower the safety, and the hammer doesn't fall. The um, revolver division, what we talked about earlier as far as some of the safety devices, that it doesn't pull back with the cylinder open. So the cylinder is open. When the cylinder is closed, we make sure that when it does fire and we haven't released the trigger yet,
that this internal safety, the trigger starts slowly coming out. And there you see it moving. So that's one of the things we're looking for on that. With the CCP division, just like the XM or, uh, XDM, there's a couple things you can do with this. Now this falls under ESP rules, so we can have the grip stippled like this one is, so this is perfectly legal. And like we talked about earlier, this does not have a decocker, but it does have a safety. So we got to make sure the safety works, that it is functional, and then when the safety's off, it fires. Um, M&P is a perfect example of an SSP gun that you, if you want, you can stipple this back part of the grip. And the reason we can is because it is removable and you can replace it. So you can stipple this all you want, but you cannot stipple any other part of the frame. 